What is up guys? I have a huge announcement for you today. Something I'm really, really happy to tell you. I am now an EHP Labs sponsored athlete and I'm very happy to be on the team. It's a great company. I found out about the company about two or three years ago when I was in New Zealand visiting my sister. I have a friend there, Joseph Rakic, and he used to be one of their athletes. So I was using their products from him and I was very, very impressed. So for now, for me to be a part of their team, I'm very, very honored. And I'm so excited to join them on this journey back to the stage and the rest of my career. So here we have it, EHP Labs. Got a nice vest top here from them and a big box. So let's unwrap, open the box. We've got some cool shakers, very bright colors. We got this cool bag. I'm a big fan of bags because I'm always taking everything everywhere. So we've got a really nice bright blue bag, EHP Labs. We got their isopeps, right? This is a chocolate decadence flavor. This is their hydrolyzed way isolate. Um, I'm really, really, I'm a bit weird because I get really into like packaging and I really like it. But this is like a matte feel with embossed um, shiny writing. It also has um, visually impaired equal opportunity. So the, the um, embossed here, which is again, really cool for a supplement product. And not many companies do that. We've got their OxyWay, which is a isolate concentrate blend. This is peanut butter puffs, which is basically Reese's. Um, we've also got another OxyWay. This is cereal milk crispies, which is, you know, rice crispies flavor. Very, very cool. We've got my favorite products, as you guys know, beyond BCAAs and EAAs. I'm always drinking EAAs every day, all day, you know. So we've got a kiwi strawberry flavor and we've got a peach candy rings flavor, which is very cool because you know, I love my sweets and we've got good flavors. Very, very good. They taste great. I'm very, very pleased. We've got their pride pre-workout, which is, it actually says on here, king of free workouts. So it's the king. Again, matte embossed with shiny, feels great. looks cool. Uh, very good pre-workout. It's got stimulants, caffeine. You know, a pre-workout is not just stimulants. It's got a good pump formula. Uh, more aminos in there, so it's a very good product for all round, you know. We've got some L-carnitine, which helps burn body fat. We've got a couple more clothes, t-shirts, got a cool hat. We've got some swim shorts. we also got Oxy Shred Normal Mango Flavor. It's a very, very good flavor. You wouldn't believe this is actually a fat burning product because it tastes great. I'm very impressed. We've got PSI, which is uh, another one of their pre-workouts. It's a non-stim, it's just a pump product. So, you know, if you're having a late, late night workout, again, you can hit up that. Oxy Shred non-stim. So again, it's a fat burning powder with no stimulants. So if you've got late night cardio and you don't want to struggle sleeping, it's a very good product. Then we've got Oxy Shred Hardcore, which is Jam-packed for the stimulants, you know, when you're on prep and you're digging deep into low body fat stores and you really need to kill it, this is the one for you. Ultra Shred with extra caffeine, some extra stimulants, very, very good. We also have a pill pot, because you always got to stay organized. And we've got some flip-flops. <laughs> My big feet. But yeah, as you guys can see, Everything's beautifully colored, very stands out. There's a lot of detail in the packaging with a matte embossed finish. Um, the flavors are great, tastes really, really good. And the ingredients, the most important thing, the ingredients of these products are very, very good. So let's just look at the isopeps, is a hydrolyzed whey protein, right? It also has a lot of anti-bloat properties. It's got digestive enzymes. It's got some cortisol hormone blockers. So ashwagandha, KSM 66, um, full B vitamin panel, you know, it's not just protein powder, there's a lot more in it. So you're not gonna get any of that bloat that some people get from lactose. And yeah, man, just, I'm not gonna overcomplicate it. I'm just gonna tell you how it is. Uh, you know, I'm not one of these people that goes from company to company. I'm very, very, very much impressed with this company. I'm so glad to be on the team. I'm very impressed with the flavors and, you know, just they're a whole ethos. They're a very big global brand. and. I like to travel and I like to get around the world and I'm very happy to be with them and be able to come back to stage with them backing me. And you know. What is up guys? So, today's video we've got something a little bit special. 
Uh, we're going on like a day trip, road trip drive to Oxygen Gym. Um, I've really, really wanted to go for a long time. Obviously, I've been here in Dubai six months now, and when I originally came, um, it was what I wanted to do was to go, drive to Abu Dhabi and go check it out. However, I didn't actually manage to go before I got injured, which is a massive shame because I would love to have got a huge, huge workout there, you know, killed it, but however, that's just what, that's not gonna happen now. But uh, I actually, I came here yesterday and I, I did um, a bit of an upper body workout just to come and check it out and see if we could film. So today we're going back and we're gonna train some legs and we're gonna film it for you guys because this is honestly one of the best gyms I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and as you know, I've traveled a lot. I've been to Australia, America, a lot of places around the world, and this is really, really up there. You know, they've got every single brand of equipment I've ever seen. Um, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So we're gonna go, gonna go train some legs, and I hope you enjoy the video. This is the first of Abu Dhabi. As you can see, these signs tell you the maximum speed limit because in Dubai, the speed limit says 100, you can do 120. It says 120, you can do 140. But in Abu Dhabi, you can't. And I found that out last time I came because I drove down the road and got about five speeding tickets straight away. <laughs> so we're definitely not gonna do that again and uh, we will stick to whatever the sign says. So as you can see, it looks like we're pulling up to some roadworks, but it's not. This is actually the border where they filter through you if you're allowed into Abu Dhabi or not. No, realistically, you just need a PCR test to go to Abu Dhabi, which is pretty crazy because you, you don't actually need one to get back. So I can drive there and not be allowed in, but I can drive back, it's okay. So as you can see, all these lanes change over and it comes to a standstill and you've got the police filtering through us. We're through, we're here in Abu Dhabi which is the capital of the UAE. Um, they're a little bit more stricter here on COVID rules. So as you can see, we uh, came through the border, which is for COVID. Uh, you have to prove you've had a negative PCR test to enter Abu Dhabi. But you don't need one on the way back to Dubai, which is, which is a bit crazy, but uh, it is what it is. Um, at least it's safer here. You know, Abu Dhabi is a lot more hot on COVID and everything's uh, lower numbers here. So it's all good. But we're on the way to the gym, we're through, we're in Abu Dhabi, let's go. So we finally made it. We are here at Oxygen Gym. Look at the size of this place, amazing. It's literally a, well they call it the muscle factory yeah, and it definitely is. It's so well made, look at it, it looks beautiful. The, the red and the black and the dark colors just look really, really nice. From outside with the palm trees and everything, it looks really, really good. So it's beautiful, it looks great and it's the perfect gym. So we're gonna go train some legs and I hope you enjoy the video because it's it's very, very good here. So, as you guys can see, EHP, EHP, EHP. So, we have actually signed with the EHP Labs. They are my new supplement sponsor. They are an incredible supplement company. Um, I'm really, really pleased with the, the flavors, the products, the ingredients of the products, you know. Um, it's, it's a very certain, definite decision for me. Um, even like their whey isolate protein powder has ashwagandha, uh, digestive enzymes, etc., to help with minimizing the bloating from, some people will get from whey proteins, etc. So all of their products are very well thought through. Um, and you, as you know, you guys, I'm a very big believer of uh, EAA's aminos, and uh, we've got a really good amino branch chain product here. Uh, peach candy rings, very good flavor, you know. Looks really, really, really good. Um, I'm really happy with the flavors. We've got this peach candy ring flavor, there's a strawberry kiwi flavor that I'm both really happy with. Uh, this is their Pride pre-workout. Uh, it's very, very good. Even like the attention to detail of the products, Again, like a matte product with like embossed detail. Uh, it's very, very good. You know, the tubs look great. Again, ingredient profile, very good. Very good for the pump, very good. It's got aminos in there too. Good stimulant blend. Very, very happy to be with them. 
So we're gonna kick some pride pre-workout down with some more aminos in my intro workout. Beyond, I'm gonna go train some legs. This pride pre-workout, as you can see, lion, pride, king, is the king of all pre-workouts, and it says king of pre-workouts. Um, it's very, very good, you know? Most people just think pre-workouts are about stimulant, like, you know, kind of getting you off your head a little bit, trying to get you in the gym. I mean, to the R a little bit, you know, to wake you up and get you more focused and more in the zone, to, to have more intensity in your workout and work harder. But uh, there's also many more ingredients that should be in a pre-workout, you know, to enhance the pump, better blood flow, you know, more focus, nootropics, etc. So, you know, in this pre-workout, you've got citrulline, um, which is, again, another amino acid that gives you a better pump. You've got a full amino acid blend, so essential EAAs in here, which is gonna help with recovery and muscle fatigue while you're working out. You've obviously got caffeine, you've got different caffeine types for um, a sustained release. And then some other things in here, you know, which is just a very, very good pre-workout and I definitely recommend you use it. I've been using it for a while now and I'm very, very happy with it. It's not too off my head that, you know, it messes up my day. Uh, it has no bad crash either. It's kind of like a up and slowly wears off. You get no crashes from it, no jitters, etc. So again, it's got good, good, good stim, you know, definitely gets you in the right, in the zone, but uh, doesn't kind of wear off like some of these really strong ones. So it's very good. However, they also do PSI, which is their non-stim pump product. Um, again, less ingredients in this because it's just mainly focused on getting a better pump. Um, so like if you're gonna train late and you don't want any stimulant, then you can just take this. I kind of like to do two scoops of this and one of this, you know, you don't really need to, but it's just, just me, you know, I always like to take more supplements. <laughs> Beyond the EAAs, again, was one of my favorite products. You know I love aminos. I drink them all day, unless you do. Uh, gonna put two scoops of this in my shaker, which is 10 grams of EAAs, eight grams of branch chain. You know, peach loops. Two big, healthy scoops of that. So as I obviously said before, branch chains are, are a good product, you know? Um, but EAAs are much better. Branch chain amino acids are three amino acids, essential amino acids are nine and this is complete protein so this is kind of like eating a piece of chicken etc they actually help stimulate muscle protein synthesis um, again this is helping you from going cat catabolic and losing muscle uh, but it also helps you build muscle you know recovery we want to get those amino acids straight into the blood into the muscle so we can start getting huge while we're at the gym <laughs> and it tastes good oh so good so, as you can see, oh, I love this vanquish stuff, it's so nice. Even like, look, this little logo here on the arm. It's a warm up project. I've got the matching vest top on too. Damn. And I also thought I had the matching trousers, but uh, as you may know, I'm actually a bit colorblind and they're not the same color. I did think they were. I was ready to rock with my matching outfit, but it's no good, so can't wear it. <laughs> And obviously I know you guys want to see my legs while we're training, so you will now. This is cool. The Muscle Factory, and it's got the world's smallest lift. <laughs> so you're all right, you can fit in there? Almost. Just about. <laughs> we can press the button, I think. <laughs> Spoiled for choice here. Fuck. 
Jesus Christ. These are Jim 80, these machines. These are so nice. Again, instead of having like a cable, they've got this like cam belt. Much, very, very good, strong, very good. Loads of leg kit here, I've never seen in my life. <laughs> What's this? Glue, glue kickback, I think. It's incredible, man, look at the size of it. Huge, everything. I've never seen half of this. Got about 25 different leg presses here. Leg extension, obviously. Knee joint lining up with a pivot point. Again, you kind of chest up, pull yourself down, and let your bum come off the seat. You always want to make sure that from your ankle to your hip joint, it's kind of straight, you know? A lot of people like you end up sticking their knees out too much and messing around with biomechanics. If you want to come straight up, point your toes towards your head, fully shorten those quads. Boom. I always like to uh, stretch my quads in between leg extensions. I normally sit on the floor and I'll thrust my hips forwards. I'll show you in a minute. But I've just got to really stretch out the quads, hip flexors, etc. It allows you to get a lot more blood in there. You'll feel it as well. Force your hips forward like a Squeezing your glutes, sit down into it. Thrust your hips forward and squeeze your glutes. You want to lean back. Oh, it burns like fuck. Rolly Winkler trains here, so I feel like I need to keep the hoodie on. <laughs> Monster, makes me feel like a maggot. I think he's actually left now, he's gone back to Q8. Because the restrictions there have kind of lightened up a little, so still need to hide. <laughs> Again, so it's a very important part of not just leg training, you know, complete training for bodybuilding to trying to improve your physique in terms of looks. He's making the muscle work hard and uh, I know that a lot of people just want to move the muscle, exercise from A to B. Uh, what you really want to do is you want to make it as hard as possible because the harder it is, the harder the, the muscle's working and the more benefit you're going to get from that, right? So you want to come into this exercise and be like, okay, I'm aiming for 10 to 12 reps, but I don't want to rush them and if I only get eight, but it's a perfect eight, that's better than 10 to 12 rubbish ones, you know? So really, tempo is so important. The speed of the exercise is very, very important. A lot of people forget this. You know, you've got to really work and keep the tempo the same all the way through, start to finish, you know, concentric, eccentric, keeping the speed of the exercise the same. So make sure you focus on that and don't forget it because it's very important. However, I know right now I'm kind of, my tempo is not the best, but obviously it's because I'm injured. And uh, if I wasn't, it would be perfect, but so, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> as you can see, I've still got a, another dressing on there and a lot of people ask, they say, oh, is it not healed up yet? Yeah, well, I actually had a cyst and they had to cut the cyst out. Uh, I went back and forth for a long time uh, because of this, but uh, they actually stitched it a few days ago. So now I have stitches in there again. Um, no longer a hole and they've stitched it up. So hopefully it's the last of dressings and stitches and wounds, and hopefully we get better. But uh, that's why I've got stitches in there covering this wound. A lot of people are like, uh, toes out, toes in, there's different parts of my quad. And this is like, 
not true, you know? Uh, it's a big myth, and that's not the most important part. So if people say toes out, right? Different part of your quad, it's not. What you actually got to think about here is your hip angle, right? So when you turn your toe, what, 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 what normally happens is you turn your hip, right? This is your hip, right? You're, you're turning this. This can make a difference. But I can still point my toe out and have my hip forward. So it's not necessarily your toes, it's more your hip angle, right? So you can like turn your hips in and you can turn your hips out, right? Like this, and my, my toes are still pointing straight. See? So again, when, when training quads on the leg extension like this, the most important thing I think, well, I know from my own training is that from your hip to your, your ankle, you try and keep it straight. So you're like this, boom, you know? You get a much better. And to make it a little bit better, Put your toes towards your head. Boom. I can't actually hold myself down as well as I would with this hand. So this is kind of why my form's not as good as it would be. So again, moving on to seated hamstring curl. Um, hip angle, very important on this. You know, again, from your hip to your ankle. You wanna try and keep it straight and keep your uh, hips turned in. Again, if you turn them out a little bit, you get a different kind of contraction on your outer hamstring. Um, but to maximize hamstring recruitment, you definitely wanna put it straight. And then you wanna point your toes and just this chop end motion, you know? If you overstretch, you're using some calf activation. A few warm up sets on here on this kneeling hamstring curl. Really want to drive the hips forward and squeeze. I didn't do many sets on that seated hamstring curl because it was just, just not very big, man. And I was worried about getting in and out because of my pec. So the two sets there, I'm going to move on to something else. All this. It's kind of hard for me to do this because I know obviously I'm using my, my, my pec and my body a lot, but, but leaning on this just kind of, oh, I just can't lock in like I used to, you know? So I'm still just a little bit scared. Six sets there on that kneeling hamstring curl. We did six sets on the light, uh, leg extension, sorry. Um, two sets on this small seated hamstring curl. I'm gonna try and do, find a lying hamstring curl and do five to six sets on there. And then we'll move on to a leg press or one of these squat machines. See how everything goes. With a lying hamstring curl, um, it's much better to change the exercise and lay on your, your forearms. This obviously puts your core in a different position and you can keep your hips pinned down to the pad. Therefore, you can actually shorten your hamstrings more when your hip is... <laughs> when your hip is... Uh, <laughs> when your hips are forward, let's just say. Um, and you get your hamstrings shorter, right? So, I know I'm not doing it, because I'm struggling with my arm and locking myself down. But on your forearms, on the pad, chest, abs locked in tight, drive your glutes forward, and then you want to use this top range, you know? Don't stretch down, because you just end up kicking it up with momentum and your carbs and whatnot. So you want to use the top range of motion on a lying hamstring curl. I'll go a bit lighter and I'll show you exactly what I mean.
So as you can see, this is the female, female machine. Uh, what are they all cool? In bodybuilding, it's really important, man. This is a very, very important machine. The adductors need to be trained. Otherwise, when you're on stage and you're being judged, the judges will be able to see the curtain. And you don't want to see the curtain. You want to have big hanging slabs of meat between your legs so they can't see the back wall. And if I'm honest, I, a lot of people say you can build them through squats and whatnot, but I don't believe that. You have to do this machine. It's so important for building that like width, thickness to your leg, you know, like just this inner thigh gap needs to be hidden. You know, like if you want to be a big bodybuilder, you've got to hide that and get strong at this. And like, it's not even low reps, man. You know, like, you need like good 15 to 20 reps, good four to five sets, at least every time you train legs. I find it's very, very important. Again, speed's very important. So you want to come in, squeeze, squeeze at the top. Keep it slow on the way out. Oh, just make sure you get good contraction, good stretch, you know? It's actually really nice. I really like this machine. Sometimes I also push my arms on it, trying to push out, get a bit more flexibility, a bit more range of motion in there. Get myself a booty. Gonna build some booty. All right, so when doing leg press or hack squat or anything that you're training legs and you're pressing off of a flat surface, I always recommend you go barefoot because what's gonna happen is your foot is in this shoe and you're gonna press against this foam and the foam's in contact with the floor, right? So then you put this pressure down, the foam, you squish the foam, and then you move the, the ground or the pad, you know? So you're losing a lot of power there. And you'll notice if you take your shoes off and do it barefoot, you'll be stronger and you'll feel more stable because you're like pushing down, compressing, like compressing it, and then you're moving. And you'll feel much more stable. So always take your shoes off. You know, leg press, hack squats, squats, anything. Feet off, go barefoot. So much more beneficial and you'll be stronger too. This is a really nice leg press. I've never seen this one before, but I've seen this brand in America some places and they make like a hip press. And it's very good, it's similar, but it's not this exact one, but this is really, really nice. Very deep, not much pressure on the joints, you know, feels really good.
When training calves, a lot of people just rush it again, like I said before, tempo, you know, you're, it's not weight, it's not reps, it's contraction, you know, like, it doesn't matter whether you, you have loads of weight or loads of reps, you kind of need a bit of both, you know, go for high reps, go for high weight, but you need to get that contraction, you know, squeeze hard, get loads of blood in there, and when you get to the top, pause, squeeze harder, try and drive your ankle forward, you know, really try and drive it forward, stretch the bottom, sit there, let it kind of stretch, feel like it's overstretching, then power up, squeeze at the top, you know? So we stretch, sit there, and we calm up, and we drive our ankles forward and squeeze, making sure our feet are straight. We squeeze hard, slowly come down, stretch, drive, squeeze. Thank you very much for joining me at this amazing gym and watching this workout. As you can see, I did some legs. It wasn't my hardest leg session, you know, especially, I did a few harder ones recently, but uh, I've got this stitches in here again now and it just kind of scares me. I just don't want to ah, put too much effort in and accidentally tear one out or something. So, you know, just kind of breeze through, get some blood in there, get a good pump, try some new machines and get to film this lovely gym. Uh, again, thank you again for watching the video. Hope you subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you again soon.